And because it is the Feast of Pentecost, I invite you to look at your fiery orange insert that has announcements for this week. Mind you, immediately after this worship service, there will be fiery foods and hot news, an opportunity for parents and volunteers involved in our children's ministry to, to gather together and hear about some of the wonderful plans that we have to extend um, Christian formation for those who are the youngest among us. Or if anyone wants to come and certainly celebrate this wonderful feast day, we invite you to join us in the parish hall. There's lots of food um, and wonderful goodies um, to, to share. Also remind you, next Sunday is also a wonderful feast day in the life of our church. We will celebrate the, the Feast of the Holy Trinity. Our guest preacher will be the Reverend Dr. Clyde Glandon. I've known Dr. Glandon for over 20 some years because he was one of the clergy when I was a part of the ELCA who did um, um, to want to make sure that those who thought about going to seminary um, that they had all their marbles in their heads. So um, if, if you have any problems with me, you can, can talk to Dr. Glandon and say, how did you pass him uh, with the IQ and the psychological exam? So I've known him for over two decades. He will be our preacher, a man of God who is spirit-filled, and he will also offer a wonderful adult forum on at the center of the Jesus movement, which our presiding bishop has been lifting up, the charismatic Christ. And so we invite you to be a part of this one-time adult forum that's offered 9.35 next Sunday after the first service, and certainly hear him preach at the 9.30 and the 10.45 services, 8.30 and the 10.45 services. I want to remind you we are also involved with other events this month. On Wednesday, the 19th of June, which is a um, Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, we're going to have brothers and sisters from around the city gather at Mayflower UCC Church. We're gathering there to have an ecumenical pride celebration. I'm going to be a part of that service. I want to see many of you there um, as we certainly celebrate the diversity that's seen in our various um, faith communities. So that's Wednesday, um, the, the 19th of June at 7 o'clock at Mayflower. On Saturday, this year it's Saturday, the 22nd of June at 12 noon, we'll be a part of the Pride Parade. We've been a part of the Pride Parade for several years now. This year, we're going to join forces with Grace Episcopal Church in Yukon. It is the hope of Father Tim Bear and myself that we have at least 30 or 40 people representing our two congregations. If you're interested in being a part of the Pride Parade, please be in touch with me and in fact, I'm going to send around two clipboards right now so that we get an idea of how many people are going to walk with us. You say, Father, I can't walk the distance. No problem. Grace is going to provide us with a trailer. And so people, if you want to ride on the trailer, you can ride on the trailer. So we want to make sure that it's accessible to as many people as possible. And we will show our colors on Saturday. Note it's Saturday, not Sunday this year. Saturday, the 22nd of June. I'm going to pass around those two clipboards right now. Please make sure that it makes its way through the pews. And the other thing that I want to mention, on Sunday the 23rd, the next day, um, at our 1045 service, we are going to, to lift up, certainly celebrate and recognize the diversity of this community of faith, honoring those who are part of the LGBTQ community. And so it'll be a special Eucharist. Um, we'll, we'll have wonderful colors, rainbow colors, and you may have noticed as you came into the church this morning, on the facade of our church, there were six doors with different colors. I'm going to mention them in my sermon. I want St. Augustine to celebrate the LGBTQ community on the 23rd of June like never before. Can you do that? 
put your hands, absolutely, go right on ahead and put your hands together, church. When we talk about St. Augustine is a diverse community, we're diverse ethnically, we're diverse socially, we're diverse politically, we're diverse theologically, and we are diverse in our sexual orientations. All, all are welcome in this place. It's what makes this church what she is. And we will celebrate, as Prince said, like it's 1999 on the 23rd of June. Amen? Amen. One more thing. This year for Vacation Bible School, we're going to join forces with our brothers and sisters at Resurrection Episcopal Church. Father Sean is inviting us to be there. Vacation Bible School will take place from the 15th of July through the 19th, each evening from 6.30 to 9. We're hoping to have between the two churches 60 people participate. So we're going to limit the number of people um, who, to make sure we have enough food, to make sure we can accommodate everyone. There's a clipboard available on the, 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 the counter in the commons area. Please, please, please sign up if you're going to be able to attend VBS so that both churches can prepare appropriately. Can you do that for me? Thank you so much. Now, prepare to hear And to feel the Spirit of the Lord in this place. And one of the ways that we acknowledge God's Spirit working in our midst is when we affirm the mission statement of this congregation. And so we invite you once again to affirm what is at the center and the core of the people of God called St. Augustine. Together. We are an enthusiastically welcoming and inviting Christian community committed to the unity of all people with God through Christ. And as we say each Sunday here at St. Augustine, welcome, welcome to worship. Indeed. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The apostles spoke in other tongues. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we sing our procession, O hymn, we pray that everyone received a candle. Those of you who are at the ends of the pews closest to the center of the aisle, please have your candles ready and light your handheld candles from the acolyte torches as they make their way to the entrance of the church gather around the baptismal font, we sing to the glory of God with tongues on fire.
our Lord Jesus Christ seal the paschal mystery of his death and resurrection in his ascension and the gift of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. That same Spirit continues to give birth to God's people by the waters of baptism. I call upon you, therefore, to renew your own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Continuera-tu dans l'enseignement et la communion des apôtres, dans la rupture du pain et dans les prières? I will, I will, with, with God's, God's help. Perseverarás en resistir al mal, y cuando caes en el pecado, te arrepentirás y volverás al Señor. I will, I will with, with God's, God's help. Wilt du door sport en bijspeel de Gute Grachter Gottes in Christus Bukundi? I will with God's help. Mauka anda mencari dan melayani Kristus di semua orang mencintai sesamamu seperti dirimu sendiri. I will with God's help. Lungeri sine, cum novus nostra opera a salutam operum qui sunt e ecanam boca berut. Te Arober multiplicat, I will with God's help. Burishili Mistrimita, Kispravid Livesti Imiru, Mesju Semi Dudmi, Iubijat Dastainsva Kajdaga Chilevica, I will with God's help. Ta praposete te, na anagno pisete. Tadora ponsas exe potheus, kai na dikrinun posta crisimo poe tun giat in oikodomese tes, basileias tu theu, gia irene, kai dikai osune. I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestow upon you the forgiveness of sins and keep you in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And as people who are filled with the Spirit, we sing about that Spirit and are sprinkled with baptismal water as a sign of cleansing renewal and rejoicing let the revival begin every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart
forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and we invite the children to come forward for a brief children's moment. Good morning, how are you today? Good. What's special about today? Candles, and the candles have on the top of them what? Fire, what else? The colors are different, that's right. What else? They're red, and what other colors do you see? Blue. Orange and other colors and a little bit of purple. And the other thing that's special about today is the wind. I want to ask you a question. When you came to church this morning outside, was it windy? Yeah. Was it windy for you? Yeah. Yes. In your backyard, it was really windy. How could you tell that it was really windy in your backyard? What started blowing around? The trees and the leaves? Well, guess what? We're celebrating that in the church today. Question, can you see the wind? No. No, you can't see the wind. Can you hear the wind? Yes. Can you feel the wind? Well, guess what? Sometimes maybe you can see the wind. What do I have in my hand? Do you know what this is called? A spinning thing. It's called a what? A, like a windmill. That says something about the age difference, doesn't it? I bet you I can ask some of the adults what this is. What is this? A pinwheel. And guess what? When you blow on it, look. You've done that before? You can see that wind spin around and around and around. Wow. Guess what this is? You know what this is? It's a flute. Yeah, it's like a flute. Like, almost like bagpipes, but not quite. But it's a flute. Like pan pipes. Absolutely. 
what will happen if I blow across the top of these pan pipes? It'll whistle, whistle, it'll blow. You want me to do that? Hmm, you think I could take James Galway's position as a flutist? Mm, maybe not so much. But for it to sound, it requires what? Wind or breath to blow across the top of it. What's this? A little spinny thing, and when you turn it on, air, it's great, it's wonderful, it's fantastic on hot days. All three of these things, in a sense, spin and represent the wind. When I turn this on, guess what? I can feel the air. I can feel the wind. When I blow across the top of this pan pipe or this pan flute, you can hear it. And when I blow across this pinwheel, you can see it move. What does that have to do with today's special day? You know, the spirit sometimes moves in our lives and in our hearts. And we can see the spirit in action with what people do in the world. When we go out and feed the hungry or we take care of someone who's sick, that's how we can see the spirit is moving. We can hear the spirit when we sing our songs or when we tell someone that God loves them. And we can feel the spirit in our worship service when it causes us to be happy and joyful. And we're willing to share the good news with everyone in the world. Today's also called the birthday of the church. It's a special day. It's Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came in and blew on those disciples with the rush of a mighty wind. So you'll have an opportunity to talk about Pentecost and celebrate and make some wonderful things that we're going to see after worship service. But right now, we invite you to follow the cross, go to Children's Chapel, and we'll see you later, friends. Thanks so much. God bless. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each, amazed and astonished, asking, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? Yet how is it that we hear in our own native language? In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be God declares 
that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I shall pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I shall pour a portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and smoke shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be According to John. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, 
but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I now leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. a bunch of Pentecostals in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen I speak to you in the name of our life-giving, loving, and liberating Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may extinguish your candles, but let your little light so shine before others that they may see the good works that you do and give glory to God who is in heaven. Amen. Last week, I had an opportunity to reminisce with uh, two of my colleagues, with Deacon Robbie Trammell and Sarah Emily. And uh, we were talking about a wonderful sitcoms of a not so distant past. Uh, I didn't know whether Sarah Emily was, was old enough uh, to, 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 to remember watching um, a show that I watched every um, weekday evening um, called The Dukes of Hazards. Any of you remember, oh, some of y'all laughing. Oh, look at them hands going up. Go on ahead. Wave your hands like you're a bunch of charismatics, okay? You can get away with it right now. Amen. How many of you uh, watch the Dukes of Hands? Let's see those hands. Catch that on the camera, y'all. Look at that. Episcopalians raising their hands in the air. You remember the, the Duke boys, right? Uh, right. Say what? 
Talk back to me, Randy. What? Do you remember that part? Damn dukes, damn dukes. <laughs> And you had Uncle Jesse, you remember? And Boss who? Oh. Boss Hall, okay. And what car did the Duke boys drive? The General Lee, you remember that? And it, it, was, it was painted what color? Orange. Orange. And I don't think there was any association with OSU, but I mean, you know. <laughs> Pentecost, right? Right? And then and, and, and the characters on the Dukes of Hazards had a particular um, twang to their, to their voice, right? Um, and then, 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 then I remember talking to, to Deacon Robbie. I said, um, on, on Saturday evenings, um, I would, would belly up um, to, to the counter in, in our kitchen, sit on one of the bar stools and rock back and forth and, and eat Oreo cookies and chocolate milk and watch um, another wonderful show um, that was part and parcel. If um, when you come back from the city dump, you have more stuff than when you took. <laughs> or you might be a redneck if your dad walks you to school because you're both in the same grade. So Foxworthy's um, notion that the take on it is that rednecks are, 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 are not that bright. They're, they're not the sharpest pencil in the box, not the most colorful crayon um, that's brought in the tote. You're deemed unsophisticated, backwards. Now you may be asking, uh, well, what does being a redneck have to do with today's wonderful feast day, the Feast of Pentecost? How you gonna make that one work, Father? Well, stay with me, church, stay with me. That passage that we just heard dramatically read from the book of Acts mentions that those people who were gathered in that upper room on whom the spirit blew um, in the sound of a, of a mighty and rushing wind and appeared as cloven tongues of fire that danced above their heads. Um, the scriptures remind us, in fact, they tell us emphatically that those folks were from Galilee. Passage says, are not these folks Galileans? Yeah, 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 I read that, I've heard that. So what does that have to do with being a redneck, Father? Well, scholars have assumed that those folks who were from Galilee were from the backwoods country. They were unsophisticated. They were backwards. They were befuddled. And in fact, scholars would say that the Galileans had a certain twang to the way that they spoke. The assumption was that they didn't know how to pronounce appropriately the guttural sounds of the language. And they had a tendency of swallowing their syllables. In other words, instead of saying, mm, I'm, I'm, I'm running... They'd say, I'm running instead of I'm running. Or I'm going hunting instead of hunting. They were backwards. And the interesting thing is that these provincial backwards folks who are maybe even a little slow are the ones who the Spirit decided to show up and show out through. Hello, that's just like God. People who we assume are not qualified for a particular position or to do anything from God, to do God's work, to spread it abroad. Guess what? The Spirit says, ha, ha, ha. I have the last word and the last say. Why? Because I'm God all by myself. Once heard my mother say, when God does amazing things through your life, Joseph, don't you ever forget that it was God who brought you where you're at and who will indeed complete the good work that she has begun in your life. These Galileans who were rednecks 
are suddenly speaking eloquently in foreign languages of God's mighty deeds, God's power, God's love, which is able to, to go around the world. Imagine, it's, it's sort of like Dolly Parton speaking German. Or Larry, the, the, the cable guy, speaking fluent Mandarin Chinese. Or Reba McIntyre, um, speaking French. That's what was so amazing about this occurrence. No wonder the event was so powerful. No wonder it caught people off of guard. God, no wonder Peter was able to stand up and preach. And wonder of wonders, over 3,000 were saved. They were converted in one single service. One single sermon. Imagine if I was to preach and 3,000 folks were to come to St. Augustine. Woo-wee. You'd say it sure enough was the power of the Holy Spirit. What was the source of all of this excitement? I have to believe and know it was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit generated that enthusiasm and that excitement and set the church on fire. And as I reflected about the enthusiasm and the excitement that was in the early church, I wonder why people don't get excited about church anymore. Because they don't, you know. I mean, if I was, for instance, to ask this question, remember you're in the sacred space within the walls of worship. Um, how many of you are glad you came here this morning by show of hands? Let's see the hands. Okay, there's a few hands. Right, and maybe you raised your hands because we just want to humor you, Father Joseph, right? I could have stayed at home. It was a storm this morning. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. But maybe, maybe if you're truthful, if I ask you how many of you are really excited about being here, I have to believe the number might be a little bit smaller. It takes so much to generate excitement in the church these days. We Americans have literally had so much of it for so long that our sense and our sensibilities have become numb. It's difficult to get us excited about anything anymore. Maybe the church has contributed to that problem more than we dare to admit. You mean because we don't like to talk about this thing called the Holy Spirit, right? It's bad enough that the King James Version translated to the Holy Ghost, and that kind of gives us, you know, a little, a little shake. The Holy Ghost, ooh, I'm going to talk about ghosts. So maybe we change into something a little bit more manageable, right? The Holy Spirit. And even that we're uncomfortable with. I mean, that's for those Pentecostals. That's for those tongue-talking charismatics. That's for those Baptists, all that hand-waving and, and rolling around in the aisle and tongue-talking, right? That, that's something that we good Episcopalians talk about politely. We don't like to talk about the Holy Ghost too much. And we're still trying to figure out why Father Joe sweats so much when he preaches. <laughs> My friends, I believe if the church is going to remain relevant in this millennia, our attitudes towards the mysterious aspect of our faith have to change. The Holy Spirit that descended on the people Mentioned in the book of Acts, it's a powerful and transforming force. And it's still an awesome force that can empower the church to be an agent of change in the world. Unleashed among us can cause the church to be the countercultural entity that it was 2,000 years ago. The task of the church is to breathe in the spirit and be inspired by the spirit to act on behalf of God in the world. That's why we have this colorful door on the facade of our church. We dare to be an agent of change and act on behalf of God in this community, in Oklahoma City, in this diocese, and around the world. That's why I'm excited to Spirit, and it flows and it's unleashed, it will change the way that we speak to one another and the way that we treat one another and the broader community. It's the spirit that sets us on fire, the fire of God's love.
are Christians through Christ by our love. Rachel Held Evans, progressive Christian writer and speaker, died a little over a month ago. She was only 37 years old. She had grown up in an evangelical household and almost given up on the church and she had an encounter with the spirit that changed what she thought about the church and indeed how she would be an agent of change and she began to question many of the thoughts and the stances that she was so used to that are still perpetuated each and every day in the name of Christ and she's challenged she challenged the church to live up to the teachings of Jesus and dare to reach the millennials and Generation X. And she wrote over four books, and in one of her books, she wrote these words. This is what God's kingdom is like. A bunch of outcasts and oddballs gathered at the table. Not because they are rich or worthy or good, but because they are hungry. Because they said, Yes, and because there is always room for more. The table is open to everyone. The Spirit dares to blow in this place today, to blow away all hatred and anger and malice and fear and jealousy and envy and strife and isms and dares to fill our hearts with love and kindness and hope and peace and joy and indeed sets us on fire, the fire of God's love, the fire that is able to transform this world, the fire that people are drawn to. Because if the church doesn't catch on fire and refuses to change and allow the Spirit to inspire and move us, then the church as we know it will not, mark my words, will not survive to the end of this century much less the next millennia. But the good news is, the Spirit's alive and at work here at St. Augustine. And we can celebrate that fact today. We can put on our red and our orange and our fuchsia and allow the wind of the Spirit to blow. And it might even cause us to stand up on our feet and dare to join in a spirit dance. So get ready to dance, church. Dance out in the world. Change it and transform it for Christ's sake. Catch on fire. Let me stop right now. Enough said. Happy Pentecost and get ready to dance. Amen. Lord, let the wind of your Holy Spirit come forth. When the wind of the Spirit blows, warrior, come on and ride the wind. When the wind of the Spirit blows, warrior, come on and ride the wind.
place like St. Augustine on Pentecost. Our Lord Jesus Christ, after his crucifixion and resurrection, appeared to his disciples who were gathered behind locked doors, showed them his wounds, breathed on them, said, receive the Holy Spirit, and said, peace be with you, my peace I give and leave with you. So in the spirit of the crucified and risen one, I say the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share that peace with you. Please be with you now. <laughs> Please help me with always.
It's good to have all of you here in this place of prayer and praise. Remind you, if you've not had an opportunity already to fill out the attendance slips that are found in your bulletins, we encourage you to do so. Our Canterbury Connection cards. Fill them out and note that there is a place in which you can write your particular prayer requests on. Um, you can rip that part of the Canterbury card off and fold it up and place it in the, um, the blue box that's found in the commons area, or you can leave it, um, fold it up, um, and then simply drop it in the offering plate as it makes its way through the pews. We always have people who are worshiping with us for the first or second time, and we want to acknowledge those who are worshiping with us for the first or second time. Simply raise your hand or have someone point you out. Great. Make sure your hands are raised high. You have someone coming through. Fantastic. Great. We'll give you a wonderful gift that we have. is just a wonderful, tangible expression of our love and our esteem, letting you know how pleased we are to have you worshiping in our midst today and we love to say whether it's a word spoken a song that's sung a dance that takes place or christ ultimately received in bread and wine we hope you experience something of the love and the vitality of this community of faith and invite you to worship with us whenever you can god bless you please receive the offertory sentence now my friends walk in love as christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to god
Great Thanksgiving begins on page 9 in your bulletin. Uniting peoples 
of many tongues in the confession of the one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food, of new drink, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Saint Augustine of Canterbury and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And 
now joining hands and hearts and voices, we pray to the Father in the words that our Savior, His Son, taught us using the language of our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God, for you the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with great thanksgiving. Mind you that communion will be continuous. You'll receive it here at the head of the sanctuary and then turn to your right or left to receive from one of the four cups. After receiving communion, please feel free to kneel at the altar rail for a personal time of reflection and meditation. You're at the direction of the ushers.
Lord say, no, he's the Lord is upon us. To preach good news, set the captive free. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I remind you that birthday and anniversary blessings as well as any other special prayer requests that you might have will take place in our chapel. Our deacon will be there to assist you. Please receive the blessing. May Almighty God, who enlighten the minds of the disciples by pouring upon them the Holy Spirit, make you rich with his blessing that you may abound more and more in the Spirit forever. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested upon the heads of the disciples, burn out all evil from your hearts and make them shine with the pure light of his presence. May God, who by the Holy Spirit caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to him in word and deed. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.